guys, so um, I went to this event recently called Mopars and Muscle Cars at the Strip in Las Vegas. Really cool event, tons of classic cars, a lot of Mopars obviously, but there were some Camaros, Mustangs, other really cool cars uh, that were fun to see. There was a little bit of racing going on, and that's kind of what drew me to the event. I wanted to go check it out. If you haven't seen the car show portion, go ahead and click the link or, or find that on my channel. But there's a lot of really cool cars. I got a quick montage of all those. But the autocrossing and the racing, that's what I wanted to focus on in this video. Here now, it was a little breezy. And also at the autocross event, the announcer was doing his job. He was announcing a lot. A lot. It was still really cool to see the cars going around the autocross circuit course. What drew me out was a company that has a uh, factory here. It's called Speed Tech. Maybe you've heard of them. You go on social media, type that in, you'll see some really cool stuff. They do aftermarket suspension and chassis and frames for your classic cars. So what they did was they had a new versus old versus Speed Tech challenge. And basically it was I forget the, the years, but I'll go ahead and list them on the screen somewhere for you. They had, I believe, a 68 Camaro um, and a 69 Camaro. The 69 was kind of like your hot rod build of the 80s. It had like slapper bar suspension, uh, you know, fat beefy tires out back and some skinnies up front. It really has that muscle car vibe and it was, it was sweet. Then they had their Speed Tech version, which I believe is the 68, and then they had a newer Camaro. That might have been like a 2011 or a 2012. Now, the Speed Tech Camaro obviously had all of their suspension and frame goodies. Um, it had, I believe, what's called their Extreme uh, suspension. Go ahead and check out their website to get more of the details on that. And then the newer Camaro, the 2010 to 2012-ish, it had... I'm not sure if it had much suspension. It might because it looked like it had a little bit of stance. Uh, had some decent looking tires and wheels set up uh, and I know it had a supercharger on it. I think it was an Edelbrock E4 supercharger. What they did was they ran each of those cars three times around the course to see basically how they shook up and have your new versus old versus speed tech and see kind of how much difference how much improvement you can make with the suspension. Like I said, the wind and the announcement wasn't the gray, so I'm gonna cut over a lot of the, the audio. If I get good audio, I'll put it in, but mostly I might just have some background music or something because, like I said, the announcer was... I didn't grab his ass. I don't know about that. Did you see it? Were you paying attention? I also caught a lot of different uh, cars going around before they did this, this event, so there's some really cool cars. And then I caught a few drag races, so... Really cool event. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys a small piece of it. And uh, yeah, we'll just cut to that. A little bit sweet. Cars like this were designed to go in a straight line. And, and that's why we went ahead and designed the suspension and everything that we did, because it's not always fun just to go straight. Right? Like that. All right, so uh, he's consistent, a 47.7. 47.3 was his fastest. Yeah, I'm thinking that's about all you can get out of that car.
looks like he did get a cone on that run. Oh yeah, I see it. There it is. It was out going into the backstretch. So, 41 just two. based on time, he ran a 41 2. 12-hour <laughs> Drive to the track, race all day long, turn around, drive home, stop at the grocery store. 40.9. He busted it to the 40.9. In a car that he has not driven. through our group five cars just so we can get it'll be cool it'll be cool 